Since this will be the final class trial, I've come up with a special rule. So listen up! If you can figure out Mukuro's killer and go on to solve the mystery of this school, you guys win! But if you can't, then I win! And of course, waiting for the loser is the super exciting, super hard pounding punishment! Are you saying that if you lose, you'll execute yourself? Yep, sure will! And that's final? No loopholes? No wiggling out of it later? Of course not! Bears never go back on their word! Never mind all that. I just have one question for you. Oh, you're taking this serious, huh? Are you feeling okay? Is the mastermind only one person? Hmm? Don't bother. I already know the answer. You're all the mastermind, aren't you? You're all out to get me! I'm right, aren't I? I knew it! You guys have all been working together, haven't you? I have evidence, so I know I'm right! Hey, you stole my line! You're all out to get me, I'm sure of it! I have evidence of my own! What a coincidence! I too have evidence to present. Evidence that proves everyone other than me has been working together. W what? Wait, hold on! This doesn't make any sense! How can the three of us each have that kind of evidence? You guys have all been- I have evidence! Hey, you said you're all out to get and I have evidence! What a coincidence. Evidence that proves every- Wait, what? This doesn't make any sense. How can the three of us each have that kind of evidence? <laughs> no, it's wrong! It's not just you three. I have evidence, too. What? You too? The evidence you're all referring to is this group photo, right? Well, well yeah. Huh? Wait, but mine's different. With the picture you have, I'm in it. But that can't be right. Because in my picture... See? I'm the only one not in it. Hero, you have a picture too, right? Let's see it. Okay, but be careful with it. It's pretty important evidence. So the secret in these pictures has been revealed. Secret or whatever, I don't care! You guys are all in on this together! That's why I'm the only one missing! But you're in my picture! You're the ones trying to trick me! So the whole purpose behind these photos was to get us questioning and fighting with each other. The mastermind laid a trap to make us each think everyone else was working against us. Huh? I laid a trap? A trap? How rude! What grounds do you have for such audacious accusations? I got it! In each case, the only one not in the picture is the person who received it. So, in the picture I got, I'm the only one missing. In the picture Hina got, she's the only one missing. And in the picture Hero got, he's the only one missing. As long as we're talking about it, I suppose I should show you my photo as well. In other words, Monokuma gave each of us a group photo in which that person wasn't included. And when we each saw our picture, we just assumed everyone else was the enemy? 
<laughs> Figured it out, huh? Yeah, I thought that must be it. But how was that a hint? Listen, can I see everyone's group photo one more time? It's not directly connected to what we're talking about, but I'd like to double check something. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I don't mind. Forget about the photo already? Ugh. Trying to trick me with such an obviously fake photo? I'm still pissed about that. And on top of that, they went to all that trouble to make it look like we were wearing matching uniforms. Hmm? So you think they're fake? No, no, no. I assure you, they're quite real. But, but what are you talking about? There's no way. Yeah! I don't remember ever taking a picture like that. So it's gotta be a fake! I'm sure of it! But you know, can we really be so sure? Huh? Don't get me wrong, I don't remember taking this picture either. But is that really enough to be absolutely positive they're fake? What do you mean? say that somehow we'd all lost our memories that could explain it couldn't it oh i get it so we all just lost our memories at the same time and forgot about the photo makes sense as if you expect me to believe such an unbelievable occult type story yeah we all lost our memories that's just crazy Saying we all got spontaneous amnesia? Since when did this turn into some kind of sci fi fantasy? I promise you, I haven't lost my memory. Ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. No, that's wrong. Those photos aren't the only things that point to the possibility of memory loss. This DVD does the same thing. You're not gonna show us something indecent, are you? No, it's nothing like that. It's a video of all of us being interviewed by the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster. When you say all of us, you mean... I mean all of us, including you. You lied! Did any kind of interview? No, it's not a lie. Just watch the DVD and you'll see for yourself. The headmaster did, in fact, interview you. What are you saying? I didn't imagine you would remember. It's not about whether or not I remember. You expect me to believe all this? That I... I lost my memory somehow? 
Well, we don't have any way to refute it, so we have no choice but to accept it as reality. How can you say that? We're talking about living, breathing amnesia here! To be honest, I have something else on my mind right now. Something else? You said the DVD contains recordings of us being interviewed by the Headmaster, right? What were the interviews about? The Headmaster sat each of us down, one at a time, and asked us the same question. He asked us if we could accept the idea of spending the rest of our lives in this school. What kind of question is that? And how did we answer? We'd say no, obviously. Actually, we all said we could. Even me. I heard myself say yes. I could spend the rest of my life at this school. Why? Why would you say yes to something like that? I don't know. I don't remember a thing. The same goes for everyone else. Nobody remembers. You don't remember choosing to live here forever, or even talking to the headmaster about it at all. It doesn't matter if I remember or not. Even if I bought the whole amnesia thing, the idea that I would want to live here forever? That's just insane! How can I believe that? Insane or not, we can't move forward until you accept it. Am I right? You sure are, because it's all true! What? I know it sounds absurd, but if it's the truth, there's nothing we can do about it. Indeed. We only have one path in front of us. Then... I really... Yep, you all totally lost your memory at the same time! This is all... making my head hurt. And this isn't like some normal kind of memory loss. You stole those specific memories from us, didn't you? Oopsie! You figured that part out too, huh? Of course. There's no way we would all just happen to get amnesia at the same time. How could someone just steal our memories? How? Come, come, come. That hardly matters right now. If I said it was hypnotism, would you believe me? Or we opened up your skulls and messed with your brains? Would you really believe anything I said? How it happened doesn't matter right now. What matters is figuring out what memories you took from us. That's what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> I knew I could count on you! The interview with the headmaster, taking that group photo, those can't be the only memories we lost. There must have been a purpose to it all. A reason for taking away our memories. Of course there was a purpose. It all has to do with the original motive. You mean the motive you came up with to try and get us to all kill each other? That has something to do with the memories you stole from us? <laughs> it sure does. But that part's still a secret. Anyway, I'm sure it's not easy, but let's all focus on the class trial for the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay, so you want us to figure out who killed her before we do anything else? Who did it? Who killed her? Whoever did it is the same one who's behind everything. That much I'm sure of. But when you think about it, is the mastermind really here in the school? Of course! They have to be here somewhere. What makes you so sure? Um... What does make me so sure? Exactly! You're just making stuff up! There's no way the Mastermind is here! The Mastermind is probably a million miles away! No, it's wrong! There's no question that the Mastermind is somewhere within the school. How do you know? Did you find some evidence or something? In the back of the data center, 
I found a panel that controls Monokuma. The Mastermind must have been using that to control him all this time. So there can't be any doubt. The Mastermind has been inside the school all along. There can't be any doubt. In which case, there also can be no doubt that the Mastermind is one of us. What? Why? Recall what Makoto told us Monokuma said to him earlier. So if the Mastermind is in the school, we have to assume it can only be that 16th student. But how'd they manage to survive all of this? So we're the only ones here? It's not me! I'm not the Mastermind! Well, it's not me! I blame Makoto! What? Why me? Cuz! It's super weird how you're the only one who survived being executed! Oh, I get it! The only way he could have survived is if he was actually the Mastermind himself, right? Aw, oh, nuts! You got me! Wait! What are you trying to say? Everyone, calm down. There's no reason to panic. The Mastermind's true identity will become clear soon enough. Just as soon as we find out who killed Mukuro. That's a good point. Rather than wasting time bickering, we should put our minds to work solving this mystery. Yeah, well, how much time have we already spent talking about the murder? He's right. What more is there to talk about? If you want something to talk about, I think there might be one thing. We haven't fully established what Mukuro's fatal injury was. Huh? But I thought we figured that out. She died when she got hit in the back of the head. No, that isn't actually what killed her. It was something entirely different. Wouldn't you agree, Makoto? I got it! All of the wounds covering her body. That's what really killed her. Hey, now hold on a second. You did read the Monokuma file, right? It made it pretty clear. Those wounds were made at least a few days ago. So they can't possibly be what killed her. Consider this. What if the murder itself took place at least a few days ago? What? What if, when we discovered her body, she'd already been dead for several days? If that's true, then naturally the wounds that killed her would appear to be however many days old. That doesn't make any sense. Because... because she had all those wounds before she ever came here. Huh? How do you know that? Isn't it obvious? She was the ultimate soldier, right? So that means... you know... You're wrong. <laughs> she denied me... <laughs> before I could even say anything. <laughs> Come on. I mean, you think I'm... not weird, okay? At least listen to what I have to say before you deny me! Mukuro was the ultimate culture. She must have been in a, a hundred different battles. So, when you think about it, obviously, she got all those wounds in battle. No, that's wrong. No, Mukuro didn't suffer those wounds in battle. The file we found in the headmaster's room said as much. Despite the time she spent in battle after battle as a member of Fenrir, when she entered this school, she hadn't sustained a single injury. To be denied so completely. Actually, it's kind of refreshing. <gasps> Maybe it's because of all of Master's training. Anyway, so we can be sure that Mukuro suffered all those wounds after coming to this school. In which case, they could be the very thing that killed her. 
As a matter of fact, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. When examining her body, I found that her stomach and head wounds came after she was already dead. Unless anyone has any better suggestions, I think we can say this with confidence. The wounds Mukuro sustained all over her body are what ultimately killed her. But if that's what killed her, then does that mean she's really been dead for who knows how long? That's exactly what it means. When we found her body in the garden, she'd already been dead for several days. So then, what about the little matter of what happened last night? Makoto, you said you were attacked in your room by a masked assailant. If Mukuro had already been dead for several days, certainly it couldn't have been her. So who was it that attacked you? I got it! The one who attacked me was the true mastermind. When we discovered Mukuro in the garden wearing the same mask, I naturally assumed she must have been the one who attacked me, but I was wrong. It wasn't her at all. It was the mastermind. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just getting a little impatient sitting here listening. I think I'm gonna jump in. Let's start off with a nice, easy question. Your assumption that I attacked Makoto is just that, right? An assumption. You can't really know who was under that mask, can you? I mean, that's the whole point of a mask. The true identity of the masked attacker is Mukuro Ikusaba. At least, that's what I think. <laughs> Do you have any evidence that might convince me otherwise? You never saw their face, right? So you can't have any idea who was under that mask. I'm telling you now, it was Mukuro Ikusaba! You're wrong. Even without seeing their face, there's another part of the attacker we can use to prove it wasn't her. Oh? And what is this other part? Is it the right hand? Or the left hand? Maybe the right foot! Or perhaps the left foot! Or could it be... the hips? You never saw their face, right? So you can't have any idea who was under that mask! I'm telling you now, it was Mokuro Igus... No, it's wrong! Mukuro had a tattoo on her right hand, if I remember correctly. A representation of Fenrir. In other words, a wolf tattoo. But I saw the right hand of the person who attacked me. And there was no such tattoo. So there's no way the person behind the mask was Mukuro. Yeah, well, okay. You got me. I guess it wasn't her. But that still doesn't prove that it was me. It could have been, you know, someone else, right? Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I all have solid alibis for that entire night. Yeah! We were in the gym tearing you apart, so it could have been any of us. Oh, okay, sure. It couldn't have been any of you. But what about Kyoko? It totally could have been her! Uh-oh! No snappy comeback! Did I score a bullseye? If you insist, I don't mind showing you. Huh? Show me what? What do you think? I'll show you the one thing that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it wasn't me. Your hand! 
hands. Awful, isn't it? It happened when I was first learning to be a detective. I was inexperienced. I thought you didn't want anyone to see those scars. If it means we get another step closer to unmasking the mastermind, it doesn't really bother me. My scars should suffice as proof. Makoto, did the person who attacked you have scars like mine? No, not at all. I'm positive. Then this much has been made clear. There can be no doubt that the one who attacked Makoto is the true mastermind. <laughs> this is just awful! On top of my secret being revealed, I had to look at those positively grotesque scars of yours! Uh, sorry, did I say that out loud? I do hope I didn't hurt your feelings. Not at all. You can say whatever you want. Sure. As long as it means pushing me farther into the corner, right? But I'm not cornered just yet. Because if you haven't noticed, the circumstances surrounding Mukuro's death are totally unknown. That's true. All we know right now is she was killed a good while before this morning. On the contrary, we don't know anything other than that. You're not going to tell us she was already dead before we arrived here or something, are you? <laughs> In that regard, you have nothing to worry about. I promise you, without a doubt, she died after our little killing game began here. Then somehow, she was killed in secret without any of us knowing. And after she died, who knows how much time went by before we found her, right? Did the culprit stash her somewhere? She couldn't have been in the garden the whole time, could she? If she was, she would have been totally decomposed. Just like your brain! Then, she was being stored somewhere? But... To hide a body here... To just store it somewhere? I got it! Mukuro's body was probably kept hidden in the bio lab. The bio lab? You mean on the fifth floor? That's right. It's actually set up for use as a morgue. So it's the perfect place to hide a body. And it'd keep the body preserved at the same time. Then you're also saying the body was moved from the bio lab to the garden. And I have no doubt that that's exactly what happened. In fact, I have proof. I got it! What makes me so sure the body was carried from the bio lab to the garden is... The tarp that we found in the garden. When I was checking it over again, I noticed something. I noticed that some text had been stamped on one corner of the tarp. Oh, it says bio lab. Holy cow! How'd you notice that tiny little thing? Makoto's nitpicky nature seems to have surfaced with perfect timing. This proves that the tarp originally came from the bio lab. In fact, there's a whole stack of tarps just like it in there. So when the killer moved the body to the garden, they must have grabbed a tarp to wrap it in. Then they simply left it as it was to protect against the sprinklers and put the code on it afterwards. Wow, you made everything sound so amazingly consistent. <laughs> That's just a wild guess! Where's your evidence? Prove that the body was wrapped in a tarp and moved! There is no evidence. I was simply explaining what I think happened. But you seem to be getting pretty worked up about it, wouldn't you say? Worked up? Now that the conversation has turned to the topic of the bio lab, you must be getting pretty nervous. Because the key to uncovering your secret identity is hidden within that room, isn't it? Are you talking about unmasking the mastermind? You see, the biolab contained an inconsistency. One so major it can't be overlooked. La la la, 
I can't hear you. La 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 la. Such a child. Oh well, just ignore him. Hey, by the way, Makoto, what about that one thing? What one thing? <laughs> what do you think I'm talking about? Your family. <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot about that video message. So what do you think? Are you sure your family's still okay? Why are you bringing that up now? Your mom, your dad, your little sister. What do you think has happened to your family? Are they really as safe as you might have assumed? Stop talking about that! Calm down, Makoto. He wants you to get upset. Are you sure about this? Are you sure about this? Rawr! What? What do you want? Are you sure about this? 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 Rawr! What? What do you want? Are you sure about this? 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 I'm not listening! This should prove it. The inconsistency Kyoko's talking about is... The lights! Yippee -ha! What, what are you talking about? Uh, what about the lights? Like I said before, the biolab also acts as a morgue. And as part of that, a giant refrigerator was installed in there. That's where everyone who's died is stored. And it was set up so that when a slot had a body in it, a blue light would turn on. In other words, if the blue light is on, that means there's a body in that slot. But I counted up the number of blue lights that were on, including the one Mukuro was in, and there were only nine. What does that matter? You gotta give me the bite-sized version here, man. I got it! Ten of the lights should have been on. Any other number is incredibly suspicious. Suspicious? Why? That's simple. Just recall who's died here so far, and it should become clear. should make you immediately suspicious. But according to the lights in the bio lab, only nine people were being stored there. You're saying a dead body just up and disappeared? I got it! The mastermind destroyed one of the bodies to get rid of evidence. But if they wanted to do that, they would have destroyed Mukuro's body, since they actually killed him. 
And yet, her body was left alone. Then, whose body disappeared? It may very well be that none of them disappeared. And if that's true, then why doesn't the body count match? Including Monokuma's executions, there have apparently been ten deaths. But there were only nine bodies. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm completely lost. How can the number of victims be less than the number of murders? I got it! What about if the same person was killed twice? Huh? Killed twice? Officially, ten murders have been committed so far, but one of the victims may have been murdered and then murdered again. Murdered and... murdered again? If that's the case, there could have been ten killings, but still only nine victims, right? Technically, you're right, I guess. Something like that could easily have happened. No, it is what happened. Sounds like you're already convinced. Then can you tell us who was killed twice? It was Mukuro, of course. Before she was killed as Mukuro Ikusaba, she was killed as someone else. And that's why the body had to be stored in the bio lab until the moment we found it in the garden. No, 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 that's crazy talk! She was killed as someone else? Come on! Besides, who could that someone else even have been? All you have to do is look at those bodily injuries of hers, and that will become obvious. Nothing's gonna become obvious! Because Kyoko's totally delusional! Who is this someone else that Mukuro was killed as? Was it Sayaka Maizono? Junko Enoshima? Leon Kuwata, Chihiro Fujisaki, Mondo Owada, Kiyotaka Ishimaru, Pifumi Yamada, Celestia Lu, whatever, or maybe Sakura Ogami? No, no, no. There's no way anyone was murdered twice! No, it's wrong! Junko, wasn't her fatal injury pretty similar to Mukuro's? What do you mean? Well, remember what happened to her? She was impaled by a bunch of spears all over her body. And Mukuro died from a number of wounds across her body. When you compare that to the stab wounds Junko suffered... And the similarities... Yes, and those are the only fatal injuries that match up. That explains why those two bodies are actually one and the same. So let me see if I have this trick. Junko, or someone going by that name, was stabbed to death with multiple spears. Then her body was kept in the bio lab for however long before being dragged out again. Only this time, it was presented as the corpse of one Mukuro Ikusaba. It all matches up, right? Those wounds Junko suffered could easily be these same injuries. It's really true? Mukuro and Junko are the same person? Wait, so then... What does it all mean? It means that there haven't been ten victims, but nine. Which also means that among the people we thought were dead, one is still alive. And that's the true identity of the Mastermind? Who is it? Who's behind all this? We already know the answer to that. It's Mukuro. She's still alive! She took Yunko's body... ...and made it look like she was the one who died! 
Zero is still alive! She's gotta be! A little silence? Then I must be right. I'm right, aren't I? No, the body we found in the garden was Mukuro. That's one thing we can be sure of. The body's appearance and measurements are consistent with her records. Right, Kyoko? She was 5 foot 6 inches tall and weighed 97 pounds. Her vitals were 31, 21, 32. Everything in her profile is consistent with that corpse. And then there's the matter of the Fenrir tattoo. So there's no question it's her. <sighs> If Mukuro's not the mastermind, then who's actually still alive? Here's my answer! Junko is still alive. It's the only possibility. Are you sure about that? Huh? I admit, since Mukuro is undoubtedly dead, Junko does seem to be the only other explanation. But we saw her get impaled. She died right before our very eyes. If Junko were still alive, the death we saw would had to have been some kind of charade. But you yourself confirmed she was dead, did you not? There's no question, Junko was dead. So, the idea that she's still alive... It must be... wrong. Then you're withdrawing your previous statement? <laughs> I know you gave it your best shot, but too bad! I guess your conclusion was a dud. <laughs> too bad, too bad! This case hasn't been decided just yet. Uh -oh. You haven't given up already, have you, Makoto? No, of course not. There's no way I'd give up that easy. That's all well and good, but how do you intend to solve the problem standing in your way? Junko absolutely died. Mukuro absolutely died. Then both of them are dead, right? There can't be any kind of survivor story. I think we need to look at this from the opposite direction. Huh? The opposite direction? Let's assume Junko is still alive. If so, how could she have survived?
What if she switched places with someone else? Switch places? That's right! Before the spears could kill her, she got someone to take her place! Specifically, Mukuro Ikusaba! Then that would make it Mukuro's corpse that showed up later. Which is why the body's height and weight and everything match Mukuro's profile, right? I don't know anything about the switching places thing, but... That had to be Junko who got stabbed to death, right? Yeah, you're saying they switch? When could they even have done that? Right when she was uh, about to die? Like she used some kind of ninja replacement technique? Good point. There's just no way they could have switched like that. So maybe the whole idea is wrong. I got it! The two of them may have switched places from the very beginning. What? From the beginning? Yes, from the moment we first met. If that's when they switched, then they wouldn't have had to switch at the moment of death, right? After all, the one we saw at that point would have already been Mukuro. Uh, hold on. So you're saying the Junko we first met is actually Mukuro all along? Um, we'd already met her? I had, like, a normal conversation with her. When we first met, none of us knew who anyone else was. So Mukuro could have simply told us her name was Junko. And we never would have known the difference. That would easily allow the two of them to switch places from the very beginning. Wait! But Mukuro had a tattoo on the back of her hand, right? Junko never had any tattoo like that, did she? She could have hidden it with foundation or something like that. If she did, it likely melted away in the explosion, exposing the tattoo after the body was extinguished. Plus, there were the fake nails found on the hands of Mukuro's body. They were the same fake red nails she was wearing when we all met for the first time. But if she really did use foundation... Correct. Even if there was no tattoo on her hand, I couldn't say for certain it wasn't Mukuro. So I'm glad nobody noticed that glaring hole when we were trying to figure out who attacked Makoto. But too bad for you, Monokuma. You can't deny it anymore. Wait, so... this whole thing was a setup from the very beginning? If that's true, it was quite an elaborate plan to be sure making it look like Mukuro was Junko. The reason such an elaborate plan was possible is because the two of them were working together. So Mukuro, the ultimate despair, teamed up with someone like her. In other words, it would be fair to say that Junko herself was also the ultimate despair. What's wrong? Lost the will to fight back. I think he's just afraid. Afraid? What's that mean, afraid? Fear is only possible where hope is possible. I only have despair, so fear is an alien concept to me. Then why haven't you been saying anything? Because it's a bunch of nonsense. Junko's my secret identity. <laughs> As if. Then why did you try and protect Junko's real identity? I tried to protect your identity. When did I do that? I got it! While I was in the AV room, watching the DVD of our interviews with the Headmaster. Thank <laughs> you. 
you made sure I couldn't finish watching the video. And the reason you did that is because you didn't want me to see the real Junko, did you? Oh, yeah! If everyone was in that video, of course Junko would have had to show up. And if Makoto saw the real Junko, it would have been totally obvious that the Junko we met was an imposter. The bad whole power outage thing was just a fluke! Thing you tried to cover up. You did the same thing with this group photo. Uh, uh oh. I noticed it just a little while ago when we were all comparing the photos we'd gotten. In all the photos, there's a certain similarity, an unusual circumstance. But what's so unusual about them? face. The one thing common to every single photo is that you can't see her face. It's hard to believe her face would just happen to be hidden in every single picture, don't you think? And on top of that, in this photo, you can see that Mukuro is clearly visible. So in other words, at that point, the two of them hadn't switched yet. With all that in mind, there's no doubt that the girl whose face is hidden here is the real Junko. Which is why you had to have pictures that didn't show her face. Because if we could have seen her face, then it would have clearly revealed that the Junko in the pictures wasn't the Junko that we knew. Xanadu! I believe everything Makoto said is true. Junko and Mukuro switched places before we met either of them. So she killed Mukuro, who had taken her place, making it look like she died. And the real Junko is still alive. And she's the one behind this whole murderous situation. This killing game. She's the true mastermind and the ultimate despair! Xanadu times two! With this, the identity and the crimes of the mastermind have been exposed. No! No, wait! Now hold on! Don't bother trying to deny it. There's no more room for debate. You don't have anywhere left to run. I'll prove everything right now!
exactly what happened. We met the ultimate fashionista, Junko and Oshima, right after we all arrived here. But that wasn't the real Junko. The girl we saw before us was actually the 16th student who had taken Junko's place. And that girl's name was Mukuro Ikusaba. But it wasn't long before she died at the hands of Monokuma. In other words, the mastermind, Junko and Oshima. Her body was kept in a bio lab, which had been converted into a morgue, until Junko decided to put her body to use. Junko dragged the body out of the bio lab, using the tarp to carry her to the garden. She fabricated the murder to try and frame Kyoko, who proved to be one big thorn in her side. Meanwhile, she wanted us all to think Mukuro was still alive and hiding somewhere inside the school. So she put on a mask and then attacked me. After making sure I'd gotten a good look at the mask, she left the room. Then she put the same mask on Mukuro's body. This was all to make us think the person who attacked me and the corpse were one and the same. She wanted us to believe the murder had only recently taken place. Finally, by strapping a bomb to the body, she was able to destroy any remaining evidence. She needed to hide the body's true identity. She had to make sure we didn't find out it was actually the same person we'd met in the beginning. This is the truth behind Mukuro's murder, and the one who carried it all out is the true mastermind. The one controlling Monokuma. The real Junko and Oshima!